each other We're cool for the summer Welcome to the final hour of YouTube Pride 2021. I'm Demi Lovato coming to you from the Wisdom in LA, and I'm here with my best friend and soulmate, Matthew Scott Montgomery. Hi, everybody. It has been an incredible Pride so far. We've had Elton John, Trixie Mattel, Ali Alexander, Bananas. And for the next 60 minutes, we're going to continue partying with a purpose, supporting amazing organizations like AKT, The Trevor Project, and the Elton John AIDS Foundation. We've got so many incredible and talented friends joining us tonight, and I'm so excited. Let's all get right into it. Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. We have actor, advocate, and amazing human being. Please welcome Johnny Civilly. Thank, Thank you for having me. I'm so yes, excited of course. to be here. And activist, model, ballroom legend, the Wonder Woman of Vogue, Laomi Maldonado. That's right. Yes. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, thanks for being here, you guys. I'm so glad that you're here. Obviously, we didn't get to do this last year. So, Johnny, what do you got for us? So, a lot of stuff happened last year when it comes to queer media, and we're just gonna get right into it. One of the biggest things, which I'm sure you could all agree with, Lil Nas X's Montero video, Call Me By Your Ooh. Name, yes. changed Ooh. the game. What, what were your thoughts about it? Uh, I was gagging. I yeah. mean, the world needed this. It was about time that we just slap people in the face with mm. our truth and do it in an unapologetic way where it's like, I'm doing this and I don't need your approval. A lot of times we get put in these, to these cages where it's like, okay, that would be cute, but maybe you should tone it down. That right. was the opposite of tone down, that video. <laughs> I just keep thinking like how different our lives would have been, so many people's lives would have been, if we'd grown up with that music video, uh, like that as an example, yes, you know what I mean? Very like, true. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I actually didn't realize that he made that video to represent the homophobia and the Christian community. And I, I didn't realize that there was a deeper 
meaning behind it. Of course, I saw it and was like, oh, this looks, this work. is incredible work. <laughs> yes. And then when I heard that later, I was like, oh, wow, what an interesting element. Yeah. It like, launched right into mainstream culture with that video, too. Like, straight back. people know all about Lil Nas X. Yeah. And it, what, what I loved about it, too, is that there's so often in the media portrayed that queer people are victims. Mm -hmm. And while a lot of times we are victims of circumstance, we are strong and we are capable. And that I feel like that video really just showed, like, Oh, I'm not going anywhere. No. And either you get used to it or you get out. And yeah. I love yeah. that. Like taking the power back. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Speaking of taking the power back, TJ Osborne was the first openly gay musician to be signed to a big country record label. So mm. that was like a huge thing, especially for country music. Yes. Thoughts on that? I feel like country music is like the last frontier for us queer people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, that's it. We got that everything. Way. Yes. Thanks, TJ. It is really, really nice to be able to. Uh, hear that, you know, boundaries are being broken and, yes. and, it, and it's wonderful. Yeah. So beautiful. Well, thank you, TJ. We are so excited to hear what that queer country is sounding like. <laughs> a lot of movies and TV shows are coming out right now, but one of the ones that won a lot of awards is Rocket Man, which mm -hmm. won 16 awards last year, including an Oscar. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Our queer elders deserve their flowers as yes. well. Yes. And Elton is one of those people that has deserved their story to be told and to be celebrated. And, you know, and it's just so nice to, like, hear the music. And there's so many Elton fans that have been Elton fans for years. Mm -hmm. A lot of cis straight people that, like, compartmentalized his queerness and his totally. art. Mm -hmm. Whereas now it's like, no, you're going to see both of them both together. Of them. Yes. And yeah. we're going to celebrate that. Yes, so. give the icon his flowers, darling. <laughs> That's right. We love Elton. We do we love just... Elton. We owe you the world, Elton. And speaking of giving people their flowers, this year was a huge year for coming out. Mm -hmm. Especially, I'm going to lead it off with Elliot Page yes. made a very vulnerable and visible coming out, saying, the more I held myself close and fully embraced who I am, the more my heart grows and the more I thrive. Oh, wow. And that, it, like, if that is not the epitome of, like, how you feel when you finally live in your truth, yeah. to just say, this is me, and you all of a sudden feel this, like, weight just lifted. So I'm just so happy for Elliot. It's it's very important to see trans men being celebrated as well. Everybody's story is so different. It's going to touch people in so many different ways. Yeah. Like, there's a couple other um, coming out stories that happened this year. Lily Reinhardt came out as bisexual. That's right. Colton Underwood, former NFL player, um, came out. He was also on The Bachelor, came out as gay. Taylor Schilling from Orange is the New Black revealed her girlfriend on social media. All of these are so celebratory. I thought um, David Archuleta coming out recently oh, yeah. as, as ace and questioning. I thought it was so powerful him to say, you know, I'm not sure, but I'm talking about the fact that I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah. Because that gives so many other queer kids permission to say, like, maybe I'm not sure either. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm ace, you know? I thought that okay. was really powerful. Yeah. yeah. There yes. is room at the table. <laughs> no There's choice. room! Yes. yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> politics was always, as it is, such a big situation, especially in the LGBTQIA plus community. Pete Buttigieg was the first openly gay man to run for president. Joe Biden, on the first day of office, signed a groundbreaking order prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And the Supreme Court ruled that trans people are now protected under the Civil Rights Act. So It's about time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, what were y'all waiting for? Right? <laughs> like, I'd love when you to hear say that, you're, you're like, like, wait, yeah, that wasn't no, no, already. Like, that wasn't a thing already. And also, shout out to uh, with Sarah McBride is our first trans uh, senator, senator in Delaware. Yeah. We also yeah. have our first two openly gay black men in yes. the Congress, Richie Torres yes. and uh, Mondaire Jones. Yep. Shout out to them. Yes, God. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I always try and like celebrate the silver linings because I just know like small Johnny would have seen that and be like, oh, you know, yeah. whereas a lot yeah. of us that live around queer people and thrive around queer people are kind of like, that's our every day, you know? Yeah. I know I said it before, but if I had had a Demi Lovato, if I had a Johnny Sibley, if I had a Laomi to look up to growing up, how, di how different my life would have been. Mm -hmm. All the three of you are such huge impacts in the LGBTQ community, really are. You too, yeah. baby. Yeah, well, thanks, baby. <laughs> well, our fight is far from over. Unfortunately, 2021 has seen several anti-LGBT laws pass, more than double than what we've seen in the past three years combined. And there has been an alarming increase in violence against our trans community. We've come so far, but then you look and you see, how is that 
tripled. Like, you know, how, wh- why is that still happening? It's so frustrating. It is very frustrating. And it's, it's a very touchy subject for me. And I try to bring it to light every single time I do an interview. Because a lot of times we're being celebrated for our beauties and our talents. But a lot of us are dying for our truth. Yeah. We're dying just because we exist. And no one is really doing anything about it outside of yeah. putting up a post. And that's why pride is so important to show trans joy, Afro-Latin joy, non-binary joy, to give those people hope, you know? And hopefully the more hope and joy that we put out there will will shine so bright that it will like illuminate the dark places that we still have as a society. Work, yes. (laughs) And finally, let's talk about the past year and Demi. Like, yeah, I mean, huge. Let's well, give you your flowers. Yeah, well, Emmy. So Thank you. Thank you. Well, obviously, for those who don't know, I came out as non binary this year, and I actually had come out to loved ones and friends, uh, you know, like last year, but this year I made it public. And I, I don't know, I, I felt it was really important for me to share that with the world. I've been so open and honest with my truth to my fans. I, I I felt holding it in any longer just didn't feel right. And I wanted to share that my truth with the world. And people have been so, um, you know, it's, it's, well, most people have been so wonderful. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and that's the reality of coming out, yes. you know? Yeah. Um, but I am grateful for the progress that my family members have made in using my pronouns, uh, team members, friends, you know, just just anything. And I love the conversation that it has begun to spark. And I think that's really important. So I have uh, officially changed my pronouns to they, them. That's right. And yeah, and I feel better than ever. We're so proud of you, Dee. Thank yes. you. Yeah, Thank we you. really are. Despite the challenges that we faced in the queer community, there's still progress being made. Now please enjoy a short animation that highlights the beauty found in change and acceptance.
like to introduce you to someone incredibly close to my heart. They are an internationally acclaimed gender nonconforming writer, performer, activist, artist, style icon, fashion designer, and like me, they identify as non-binary. My very good friend, Alok Vaid Menon. Thank you so much for being here, Alok. Congrats on coming out as non-binary. Thank you. I'm so curious, what has it been like since? It has been so rewarding to hear how many people it has helped and has impacted. Um, also, people telling me that they hadn't heard of what non-binary means um, until I changed my pronouns and it forced them to take a look at the topic and who may not have been exposed to, you know, the community in, in other ways. That's why I'm just so grateful that my fans and my friends are as wonderful as they are. This is your first pride yes. out as non-binary. Yeah. How does that feel? It feels incredible. I just feel like I'm finally showing the world my truth too. So it's been really cool. But I'm curious, what does non-binary mean to you? Non-binary doesn't just mean I'm neither a man nor a woman. It means I'm so much more than a man or a woman. It means that like the universe, I'm so expansive that any attempt to categorize me will always fail. Like trying to hold water in your hand, it'll just kind of seep through. Oh, I love that. There That's are so many misconceptions about being non-binary. And one that comes up that we're some sort of like newfangled internet millennial phenomenon, living outside of the binary is not new. Another one is that we're somehow judgmental against people who are identifying as men or women, or that we think that everyone should be non-binary. All I can be certain of is how I identify. And um, for me, this has been my truth. If other people come out and say, hey, I think I'm non-binary too. Awesome, that's so wonderful. But I would never push an, an agenda like of any sort onto people, especially involving identity. Yeah, and you know, I think a lot of times people mistake us saying we want a world beyond the gender binary as saying you're not allowed to be a man or a woman. And I'd like to clarify what that means. What that means is only you get to determine what your gender is. So if you say I'm a woman, then baby, you're a woman. If you say I'm a man, then you're a man. You just don't get to tell other people what their gender is. Yes. So moving beyond the gender binary, it's not really about erasing how you identify. It's just saying you're not allowed to police other people's gender. Mm. And there's this other misconception that I get a lot, which is that non-binary fashion isn't mainstream or it's just some kind of like fringe fashion trend. But newsflash, darling, I don't know if y'all saw the Vogue cover with Harry Styles <laughs> last year. <laughs> Harry wearing a dress. Yes. Actually, this conversation is totally part of the mainstream. Harry was also wearing a blouse, the Met Gala in 2019. There's been so many amazing moments of gender-free fashion. And there's some really great examples in both yours and my history I'd love to show. Okay, cool. Um, this look Excited. over here is one of my favorites. You know, it's just a casual Tuesday afternoon, me Work. pumping through the neighborhood. Yeah. Completely functional, like five to six inch platform. Work. And what I really try to do with my fashion is show people like anyone can wear a mini skirt. Doesn't matter your size or your gender. It's just about working the mini skirt. You're right. It's all about the way you carry yourself. And if you are going to feel more comfortable in a skirt, wear the skirt. You, you heard it here first. Wear the damn skirt. Wear the skirt. <laughs> right. yeah. um, okay, so I want to talk about your fashion throughout the years. Okay. Because... I think that you've done a really interesting fashion journey. <laughs> yes, it has been interesting. <laughs> interesting. Here's a picture of you performing in 2017. Tell me, what do you see? It makes me kind of sad because I was trying so hard to be what I thought other people wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, wearing something like that made me feel sexy. But at the same time, I know that I was trying to push my sexiness out there because it's what people wanted of me. So I, I get a little sad when I see that. Taking a look at you in this iconic velvet suit that you gave a few months ago oh, at the Radio Music thanks. Awards. This is sexiness with a different approach. This feels sexy, but it feels authentic to who I am. There's just something really empowering about 
rocking a suit and making it sexy. In this next look, which is a really a TBT for, for people, we're back oh in 2014. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and you were the Grand Marshal of LA Pride. Yes. And you were also filming your I Don't Care music video. Mm -hmm. This picture actually makes me smile because I can see that even though at that time I was in a relationship with a man and I wasn't out yet as bisexual, I feel like of all of the years that I spent being someone else, this period of time was some of the most authentic that I could have been throughout all of that, those years. What I love about your fashion journey is that here you are in 2014. Yeah. Without even having the language to describe who you were, doing that through fashion. And it interrupts this idea that you just go from feminine to masculine, and it actually says it's more fluid, you know, it's back and forth. Definitely. Well, one of the reasons we are even able to express ourselves now is because of a long history of trailblazers who fought for us to have gender-free fashion. And I wanted to share some amazing icons from the past. So the first one is Sir Lady Java, and I really love the story so much. It used to be illegal in Los Angeles to quote unquote cross-dress. So there was a law called the three article law that made you to wear at least three articles of clothing associated with your assigned sex, which is so boring and unambitious. Right. So 50 police officers came into the club that Sir Lady Java is performing in to arrest her. And she pointed to her watch, her tie and her socks and said three articles and they had to back off. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, that's so great. Totally. And yeah. we totally cannot forget this next icon, Stormy Delivery. Stormy was at the Stonewall Rebellion in 1969, and she was known as the bodyguard for the lesbians. Hot. And she was wearing- I got a crush on Stormy. <laughs> she was wearing three-piece suits before any women were doing it. Now, this tradition of gender-free fashion is continuing with celebrities like Billy Porter and Lena Waithe. Yes. And what I love about Billy is that he says he feels like a man when he's wearing a dress. And that shows that we get to interpret what clothes mean to us. A dress mm. isn't inherently feminine, it's what you want it to be. Oh, that's amazing. And it, fashion is all about expression anyways. Well, look, you know how much you mean to me. I'm so grateful to call you a friend and I'm also so grateful to have you here today. Thank you for being here and thank you for all that you do. Thanks for having me. Of Happy course. Pride. Happy Pride. Hi, I'm Cleo and um, this is my Pride look. Hi, my name is Adam Anthrax, and this is my look for Pride. This is the first thing I've ever made for my drag, so it's special to me in that way. Hey everyone, it's Frida Wales, and happy Pride! This year I'm celebrating with a big pop of color, and I love my rainbows. Hi, my name's Kavita, and this is my Pride look, but there is something missing. Hi Demi, uh, this is my Pride 2021 outfit. Basically what I've been working from home in anyway. Happy Pride everyone. <laughs> Joining me now is YouTube creator, model, actor, and activist Gigi Gorgeous. Welcome to YouTube Pride 2021, Gigi. Oh my God, thanks for having me here in this oasis, Wisdom. Yes. yes, thank you for being here. You have shared your journey with millions of people. Can you tell me what was the most important thing you learned from it? Just Owning it, like truly, like, you know, you're gonna have regrets, you're gonna have mistakes. So just owning where you were, where you've come from, because we all know once it's on the internet, it's gonna live there forever. Yes. Even if you take it down. Even if you take it down, it's still up there. So it's yes. like once you click, you know, send, it's it's gonna be there. Well, tonight we are partying with a purpose. We're supporting the Elton John AIDS Foundation, AKT, and the Trevor Project. To help us raise funds for the Trevor Project, we enlisted the help of YouTube creators to launch the hashtag Give With Pride Challenge. Gigi, you're a part of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> it's a fundraiser with the goal of raising $500,000, and YouTube joined in to match every dollar donated to the hashtag Give With Pride Challenge to up to 250K. 
creators, including you and Patrick Starr, committed to doing something outrageous if we reached our donation goal. And we are so excited about how our community rallied during Pride and the work these creators did to support the Trevor Project. While we didn't quite reach our monetary goal, we are still going to release those videos. And on top of that, YouTube is still going to donate 250K to the Trevor Project. Yes, let's see what you all did. YouTube is leading a huge fundraiser for The Trevor Project. I got so excited! Me and Martita really believe in The Trevor Project and what they do for our community. Please, please donate using the button on this video. <laughs> She's scared, dude. We started! Hi, YouTube, it's Patrick Starr, makeup artist and founder of One Size Beauty. I promise and vow to bleach my brows. I kept my promise. We started! Hopefully I don't look like the world record egg again. Huh. Oh my gosh, you guys. We were eating for a minute and they are, they look white. I feel like I'm on America's Next Top Model. <laughs> All right, everyone. That is my bleach brows in honor of raising money for the Trevor Project and in honor of pride. Yes, cheers to bleach brows. I did it. Hello and welcome to a special Pride edition of Will It Waffle. I'm your host, Jackson Bird. Today we are waffling totally generic rainbow candies. I would love to see these really melt into each other and then it's just kind of this like patchwork of colorful Pride waffleness. Does Pride waffle? I'm scared to look. Whoa! This is Horrendous, literally nightmarish. I can't believe this video is happening, you guys. Is it your first time that you said to like mom and son? Yeah. <laughs> She's scared, dude. Yeah. Oh, my mom's kind of thinking of getting it right here. I think it looked really cute. I can cover it with the bra strap. Because we want to make sure that the numbing cream is like on on good, we're actually gonna tattoo me first. <laughs> It's done! Okay, why is she praying? Tattooed Martita unlocked, you guys. Martita! We decided to go back to the club because we love this one so much. Take it back, run! Four, three, two, one. Hip, hip, down. Hip, hip, down. Sorry, I was just down here looking for service. I didn't find any, but I like it. Hello, we are going to be making a song together. I asked all of you guys for random gay sentences. One of my favorite phrases I got was, I can't think straight. What do you think if we called the song, I can't think straight? Secretly being in love with your best friend I had this idea where I mention a different color in every single few sentences and we're going down the rainbow. But you only catch it if you're looking for it. So the song starts out, have you read into the little things? Have you read into the little things? Read. Have you read into the little things? I'll hold my step for a bit too long. Welcome to my queer rock com. It's always kind of been my dream to be a lead in a romance film. And thanks to you guys, I now have a love interest. I'm so, like, my heart's racing. And I don't know why. You look beautiful today. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm really nervous. Why are you? I don't know. I hope everything goes according to plan. I hope you enjoy yourself. <laughs> yes, the peak of every rom -com. The part of the film where we see our two leads fall for each other. This was not enough story. But it was a story about love. We're back. We coined a phrase. Uh, pan pandiphony. Pandiphony. Oh yes. Pandiphony. Basically an epiphany you had during the pandemic. My pandiphony, I feel like I wanna show up and I wanna be successful, I wanna be all these things, put a lot of expectations on me. 
that's not real life though. If I'm having a bad time, if I'm having a bad day, if I'm not feeling creative, that's just what it is. I'm having a bad time, I'm having a bad day, and I'm not creative today, and it is what it is, and I'll deal with it. You are about to see the transformation. Let's go ahead and start the process. is me and Drew I got a voice now. <laughs> hey guys, it's Gigi. So this month I teamed up with YouTube and The Trevor Project to raise $500,000 for the Give With Pride Challenge. Didn't reach the goal, but we were really excited about the money that we did raise. So YouTube will still be donating $250,000 to The Trevor Project. So I'm still getting dunked, girl, and I am quite nervous. We are in the middle of nowhere, and it's pretty cold and windy out. So keep watching. Oh, it's not warm, girl. Okay, I'm getting up. Oh my yeah, god, I'm yeah. scared that it's just gonna like fall. Bring another dummy. If our unborn child gets me dunked. Oh. You cheated! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Bye lashes. Let's party with a purpose for Trevor and remember you are everything. It's Prime! There's still time to donate. Use the donation button here to give money to The Trevor Project. Gigi, I have a surprise for you. <gasps> what? You'll never guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you are watching this, there's a pretty good chance you've heard of a little show called RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Last season, they were the fan favorite and one of mine too. Please welcome Got Mick. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so subtle. I was just like wanted it to be quiet. And she like, oh, well. just woke up. Yeah, just woke up. <laughs> God, I, I'm so happy that you're here. Happy Pride 2021. Oh my God, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to finally meet you. I know, me too. We've never met. I know, but we've DM'd. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Flip in the DMs. Finally, there we go. Yeah. I did. I did. I said uh, <laughs> so. I feel I definitely know, but maybe any of our viewers who don't. How do the two of you know each other? Oh my God. I feel like the world's just brought us together, the universe. Yeah, truly. I think we were literally at a brunch and someone was like, oh my God, Gottmik should paint you. And she's just a bubbly angel. And she's like, sure, Gorge, come over. <laughs> and I went over to her house and painted her. And the rest literally, is history. yeah, the rest is her story. We just clicked so hard and never looked back. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Gottmik, you were the first trans man on Drag Race. Did you realize how much of an impact that would have on the show? I think going into the show initially, I kind of hoped it would have a major impact. And so I think I had a lot of weight on my shoulders and I wanted to say the right thing and be the right thing and look a certain way. And then when I really just got out there and started having fun, I realized that I'm gonna have a connection with people for just being me and telling my story and my journey. I don't need to say the right thing. I just need to be open and honest and that's what's gonna click with people. And after the show, seeing that connection that I was able to make with so many people. And I feel like feminine trans guys are just full in my DMs doing drag now and I couldn't even <laughs> find one before. And now I just am like scrolling through, <laughs> seeing all the artistry. So I'm just so excited that I was the one to be able to come out here and be myself and open some doors. Yes. Yeah, which amazing. you're doing now. Oh, thank Congrats. you. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Uh, what has been the highlight of the last 12 months for you? I think truly that. I mean, it was my dream to get on Drag Race. And then 
but on a strict artistry level of it. And then the fact that I have gone through so much to get to be the person I am out of drag and then be able to go on the show and make such an impact and connect with so many people while showing my artistry, it was just so unbelievably better than I ever imagined. And I feel like it'll be the highlight of my life, let alone 12 months. Yes. <laughs> you have so much to celebrate and it's a time of year to celebrate, it's pride. Is there a certain way that you celebrate yourself specifically? What's pride like for Got Big? Pride is my favorite time of the year. Right. Like, no joke, I look forward to it every time I drag all my friends. I'm like, every Pride, let's go and party all night. But this year, it was my first time touring with some of my favorite girls in the entire world. It's fully like me, Violet, Vanjie, and Asia O'Hara uh. like, in one trailer, and we yes. full just get there at noon and glam all day for a 7 p.m. show. Yeah. <laughs> and we just dance to share and like oh. just celebrate Pride all day. And it's just, I could not have asked for a better Pride month. Hello, everyone. My name is Abdullah Rasheen Hall. You can call me Abby. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. And I am the artistic director of the Trans Course of Los Angeles, the nation's premier trans course made up of trans men, trans women, gender non-conforming, gender non-binary individuals like myself, and intersex individuals. We welcome in new members from the community who want to be a part of some part of this wonderful journey. And basically what we want them to know is that you're safe here. You're welcome here. This is your home. We have created a wonderful video called Victorious. One of our mottos with the trans course of Los Angeles is changing the trans narrative from victim to victorious. So get ready to see an amazing video right now. Let's watch it. Here's trans course of Los Angeles with Victorious. Living authentically is not always easy, but it is living victoriously.
Our next guest is back, and I could not be more excited. She is an icon of ballroom, a game changer, model, activist, and legendary judge. Please welcome Leomi Maldonado. Hey. We're so happy to have you. Yes. yes, welcome back. Congrats on Legendary, too. I'm so excited about Legendary. Thank you. How does it feel to be a trailblazer? Honestly, it, it doesn't really... I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't feel it. When, when I do feel it is when I receive messages from people around the world and from people who are inspired and moved by not only my talent, but my journey and my story. I was blessed to be able to open up people's hearts through, to, through my talent, where I didn't have to pull up trans card or be like, oh, here's my story. And it's like, you know, fall in love with the talent and then get to know me. Yeah. I'm here to show the world that, you know, you could be fab and be nice. Yeah. And be stern, too, because yeah. you can tell someone the truth, but do it in a respectful but it's, way. It's a family. Ballroom is family. Ballroom is love, you know, and that's tough love sometimes. That's, and that's, that's part of it. But I bet it also helped having have people around you in, uh, that were very supportive. And I wanted to ask you, what is that like growing up in a house? And that's the thing. That's the most important thing about ballroom is houses. For me, I grew up in a in, in a home where I was raised Jehovah Witness. It was no oh, celebrating wow. I didn't nothing, know that. nothing at all. You got to celebrate nothing, yeah. nothing wow. at all. Yeah. So you know, it was tough. And coming into the ballroom scene, I found a place where not only I saw people that represented who I am, but people who understood my struggle and understood, you know, the walk of life that I was starting. Mm -hmm. And there were so many people that were there for me. And being a part of a house, I've been a part of so many houses. Like, mm -hmm. I've at least been a part of at least six or seven houses. Okay. And now I am a founder of my own house, the house of Amazon. But being, like, a part of the community, I feel like without a house, you will be lost. The houses mean so much. Being able to choose a fam, being able to choose family, it's so important for the LGBT community because a lot of times we get kicked out of our homes. Like me, I was kicked out of my home a lot of times. And it wasn't because my family didn't accept me, but they didn't understand. I want to ask you about being on such an impactful show like Pose. What was it like being on that? I feel like the most commentary that I received is how powerful it is, the fact that the stories were being told by trans women mm. and trans women of color. Mm. Being a part of the borough community and being on that set of pose and seeing how they sh shined a light on the love, the passion, the family aspect of what ballroom really is. And the fact that at that time that they filmed the show the, the, in the 80s, how you know, important it was and you know, how the HIV pandemic was really attacking the community. And I honestly feel like the ballroom scene was something that kept the community going. One of the most important things I think about Pose is that it's about a chosen family. Yes. Talk to us about um, what chosen family means to you. For me, chosen family means having people around you who are going to support you through thick and thin, that they're going to love you through your ups and downs. They're going to accept you fully, but also tell you the truth sometimes and keep you on your toes. A lot of times, people want some yes-mans. I don't want no yes-mans. Yes-mans, yeah. that's no. You can't get nowhere in life if everyone's telling you, yes, you're doing it. And it doesn't matter who you choose. Just make sure that those people are right for you. And a lot of times, people forget that people come into your life for different reasons. A lot of times, we hold on to some people because we feel like that's all we have as well. And it's hard to let go. It's okay to, you know, shut your family down when they try you, honey. Let them have it. Yes. It's okay, you know? <laughs> just because somebody's blood doesn't mean that they should be able to disrespect you. Yeah. Chosen family is just about being able to connect with people that allow you to live. Yeah. Well, speaking of family, we are very lucky to have some very special guests. Joining us right now, it's Shamari, Tori, Calypso, Gravity, and Callie. From the House of Balmain, bring it. Yes. Because we're the main attraction.
guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Amazing. So I wanted to ask you guys, what does being in a house must mean to each of you? Personally, being in a house is being surrounded by people who share your same craft and talent and just feeling that love and support and that family orient. Yeah, it's really all about chosen family and just being able to create those bonds with other queer people in a way that's really, really helpful. And for me, it's being able to nurture and like build the future up so that my kids can be as amazing and talented as they are because they sometimes don't believe in it. So it's my job to make sure that they're all good and they know that everything is great. <laughs> uh, well, Laomi, can you show us some moves? Yeah. 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 It's a little light light. Uh -huh. <laughs> are you guys going to follow? Well, I'm just yeah. doing it alone. No, oh, I'll follow. Uh, we'll I'll follow. follow. Yeah, I, 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 I don't come here not to have follow. a bra on. And this it's is okay. a crop top, so I'm not lifting past you. Gotcha. Right. So we're going to do a little bit of arms, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're going to come across. Mm -hmm. Come across. Roll down. Drop. Wow. Okay. Opposite. Sorry. I didn't so you're going to come across, uh -huh. roll, and drop. Got it. And then opposite. Come across, roll, and drop. Yes. Roll both your hands to the right. Roll to the right. Come to the left. Uh -huh. Roll to the left. So let's take it from the top. So yeah. up, over, roll, down, up, over, to the right. Roll to the right. Roll to the left. Yes. You're both. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you so, so, so much. You're incredible. Thank I'm you happy. so, so much. Happy Pride. We're so glad to have you. And that was, that was amazing. Thank yeah, you, guys. Thank you so much to House of Balmain and also to the wonderful and incredible Laomi. Yeah. Yeah. Legend, Wonder Woman. Hi, Demi. I was extremely inspired when I found out that you were non-binary and that you had the courage to speak about that. I think it's extremely difficult in this day and age to just talk about your gender in general, but also to have pronouns that are they. I think it made a safe space for a lot of people that have those pronouns. I'm just beginning to be okay with being into guys publicly. The stubbornness of being who you are gives courage to others to also be that way. We see you and we love you. You're killing it out there. Keep doing what you're doing because we're taking notice back here. Hey, Daddy Demi, it's Sarah here. And I just wanted to thank you for over the years helping me come out and for helping so many of the other Levotics out there. We wouldn't have done it without you. Up. 
Drop postcards say I wish that you were here, and I'll tell you not to worry to make sure that you believe in me. But the hardest part of leaving is to make it look so easy, to make it look so easy. Accepting all the reasons that somehow we keep repeating endlessly. And the hardest part of leaving is to hold the heavy breathing back from showing you how hard it is for me to make it look so easy. To make it look so easy. 
make it look so easy I'll leave through the side streets Right by the house where you grew up Our names in the concrete But they're lasting way longer than us I'm looking for the halo I'm smiling just in case you see It's the hardest part of leaving To make it look so easy Pride 2021. We really did it. It's been amazing. And thank you to all of my guests. Gigi Gorgeous, Gottmik, Laomi Maldonado, The House of Balmain, Johnny Sibley, Alok Vade Manon, Matthew Scott Montgomery, Noah Cyrus, the Trans Chorus of Los Angeles, and of course, all of you out there. Happy Pride!